So to start talking about ostions, your textbook have this amazing picture and I show it to you not because I want that you learn all the terminology right now. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to explain everything in, in this slide. What I'm going to show you is that at the end of this section, this video lecture, I hope that you will be able to navigate through all these different names. Okay, so right now I just want to remind you that osteons are located in the compact bone that represent 80% of the bone tissue. And here you can see the compact bone in this structure. Well, here you can see the spongy bone as we talked in the previous uh, section of this video lecture. In addition, I remind you that these have very dense uh, rings of bone tissue. And here you see, for example, one ring, another ring, another ring. Yeah, and you will see rings everywhere. Okay, so that is important. In addition to that, I want to tell you that the compact bones form the outer protective layer of all bones. And now, how they do that? Because inside of each uh, compact bone, you will find a stru the structural units of this are the osteons. Yeah, so here you can see that they are the compact bones are made of osteons. So there is the structural and functional unit of a compact bone, as I said multiple times. And in this picture, you can see the osteon here in yellow. And you can see that there are a lot of names like blood, specials, uh, consecutive uh, lamella. There is a lot of things that later we will cover. However, I wanted to show you this, that here they zoom in into one uh, osteon and they show you the osteocyte. Yeah. So here you have the osteon and inside of that you will have a lacuna. So inside of the of the osteon you will have the osteocyte within a lacuna that the lacuna as you remember is the space where uh, the osteocyte is going to to locate okay so now we're going to start trying to dissect each one of these names that appear in this schematic and try to make it easy to understand one by one the first structure of the Osteon that we're going to study are called central canals. Other people call it osteonic canals, and other people call it haversian canals. And they are located here in the middle of the osteon. So yeah, in red they are I highlighted there. And if you see, you see four components there inside of the central canal that are one red, one yellow, one green, and one blue. So here the red we have first arteries you can have in green there the lymphatic system uh, here in blue they show they represent the veins and finally the four one will be the um, nerves so all of them drawn in the central canal they're located there and one th an additional thing that i have to tell you about the central canal is that it runs parallel to the long axis yeah so it goes all over the ostean in the long axis. So remember, there are different components yeah, that are located inside of the central canal that are fundamental for the survival of the, uh, of the osteons, of the bones. For example, the different blood vessels and the lymphatic system. Uh, in addition to that, the central canal run parallel to the long axis of the bones. The second component that uh, I'm going to talk is a different type of canals. Yeah, it's are called perforating canals. They can be also known as interosteonic canal. And the third name that you can find also in the literature is Bulkman canal. And here in yellow, I'm going to show you in the schematic that we have been talking about the Herbertian canals. And here you can see a big one. And this is schematic, and remember, they run parallel to the long axis. The Baldwin Canal, on the other hand, it runs perpendicular. Okay, so here you can see it. And what is the main function of these canals? If you see here, we have one, let's put it in, in yellow, 
one version here you have the second one and here if you think here there could be three yeah so the version canals they bring a lot of blood for the survival of the bones however the bulbing canal they are in charge of joining each one of those yeah so for example at the edges of bones you need all these uh, 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 bulbing canals to join in all the haversion canals and work as a microcirculatory system feeding each one of the uh, of the parts of the bone so all of them grow normally so i just to remind you the main difference between these canals and the previous one is that these run perpendicular to the long axis as i show you in the schematic and they are very important because they are connecting the aversion canals to the bone surface so this is why they are located at the edges of bones and they are very essential components of the microcirculatory systems of bones now we're going to talk about the third structure that uh, that is the lamella that is found in the osteans there are three type of lamellas that we are going to talk in the in the bones however i'm going to start talking what is a lamella a lamella is a thin layer or a membrane or a plate of a tissue that in particular here we're talking about bones however if you took uh, introductory biology courses at the cellular level you can find lamellas in the chloroplast you have in the stroma you have some lamellas some these membranes and here and if you took um, also biology classes that talk about animals you know that uh, you can find lamellas in the fingers of some animals that allow them to uh, attach better to some surface however in the osteons these thin layers uh, are found uh, in three different types in concentric lamella in the external circumferential lamella and the interstitial lamella and let me talk about that in the following slide so the first one that we said it was the concentric one and this concentric lamella is concentrically located around the central canal so here you see central canal the blood vessels and here you see all these rings surrounding uh, the central canal and not only in that one you can find it also here and here and each one of these ones that have a central canal they will have this a uh, concentric lamella the second type that i'm going to put here uh, in purple is called external circumferential lamella and is the one that is located uh, is the layer of bone matrix that go all the way around the bone so in our world is this one that go in these surrounding all the osteons in the outer layer okay and the third one that i'm going to put in orange is the interstitial lamella that fill between different osteons so for example here you can see this one let me put it maybe in black that is easier so here you find that there is an osteon here there is another osteon here and there will be another osteon possibly there so in that space filling up between this concentric lamella you will find the interstitial lamella Okay, so remember we have three type of lamella the type of small membranes uh, thin membranes that are located that are very important in the osteons in the bone tissue now we're going to talk about the four component of the osteon that is here in this case is the canaliculi and the canaliculi allow nutrient exchange as well as waste exchange okay so that is the key and when you see here in this schematic these each one of these is a cell and we if we zoom in there we have this cell that we already talked about in the previous uh, section of the video lecture that is called an osteocyte an osteocyte if you remember it was an osteoblast that it was located in a lacuna 
yeah, and later as it calcified the the extracellular matrix, secreted a lot of uh, different proteins and and structures there in the extracellular matrix. Now it turned into an osteocyte. Um, so, however, this osteocyte still need to receive food, yeah. So how it does that? Using canaliculi, and what it means a canaliculi? Canaliculi is a canal. It's a very small canal. So in anatomy and physiology, canaliculi is the passage of the body. It's a small canal. In this case, in the bones, these are canals that are located that are connecting different lacunas. Okay. So uh, in anatomy. I told you that caniculus, uh, canaliculus, sorry, are a small canal or patches in the body, in particular in bones, are these small channels between lacuna of ossified bones, and they allow that the osteocytes remain alive. Why? Because they allow them to uh, exchange nutrients and waste materials. And finally, remember that the lacuna is the small space that contain osteocytes of the bone or if we are talking about cartilage it will contain chondrocytes so we finish with the compact bone and we talk about the cellular components of the osteons and now we're going to do something similar but with the spongy bone that is also known as cancellous bone or trabecular bone and here you see the trabecula that uh, look like spiculites here, here, and here, all these structures. And in between those, you find irregular cavities where you will find in this region, they will be um, <clears throat> the red bone marrow. That is where blood cells are going to originate. So just to remind you quick facts about the spongy bone. Well, the compact bone represents 80%. This one will represent 20% of the bone tissue and is enclosed by compact bone. Uh, this bone, different from the compact bone, is a lightweighted tissue. And as I said, they have this trabeculae that I show in the other picture. And well, in the diaphysis, you have this yellow bone marrow, if you remember, in this area. In the epiphysis, you will have the uh, red bone marrow that is inside of the compact bone and in that region and you will have the red bone marrow that is a pro is the place where you have all these blood cells and uh, doing going through mitosis and this is the origin of those cells in this slide we're going to see the structure uh, of atrobicula so here uh, we zoom and we even zoom even more and here you will find the structures that we have been talking before and even cell types so here you find the cell types as we were talking before so for example all the osteoblasts are here in blue that are surrounding in the these uh, uh, the trabeculae in the in the outer region that are responsible for the new bone Just remember they need to secrete a substance to calcify it and they turn into osteocytes that they want that are the ones that are inside of the lacuna that are, are that are constrained to live in that place now the you also have to hear the osteoclast that you see in green and the osteoclast if you remember are the ones that are in charge of the reabsorption so here in addition to the different cell types so let's put a c t cell types you have also structures that we already talked to. So we have, for example, the lamella, the thin membrane. So if you remember, it is located and you find these concentric layers again. Yeah, but these concentric layers are not going to be, they are not going to have this central, um, this uh, central canal in this structure. What they are going to have also is a lacuna so that is the space where the osteocyte is located and the third thing that they have is a canaliculi that is this small passage that allowed them uh, to communicate to other osteocytes and to get food and exchange materials and this is the, the structure of a 
trabeculae. Now I want that we try to practice all these structures. I'm going to show you a picture. So now we're here just for practice. If you have time, you just have to name the structures. You can stop the video and, and try to guess all of them, or you can um, just continue watching the video. Okay, so I'm going to start with this. Um, I, I zoom in this one. Yeah. So here, what you see uh, in number one, super easy, is inside of the bone. Here you will have the medullar cavity. In number two, you will have this solid, compact bone. Yeah. Well, in number three, what you're going to have is this bone that have irregular cavities. That is the spongy bone. Finally, surrounding the bone, you have another type of connective tissue that is called periosteum. Uh, now let's move, we finish all this, the general pictures. Now we're going to move into this one that it looks so complicated, but actually is much easier than you thought. So here we have number five. In number five, we have this structure that have the, the central canal that had concentric ring, that is the unit of the compact bone, that is the osteum. Super easy. Now let's go to six. In six, we have this lamella that is between each one of these osteons, yeah, between the concentric lamella. So this one will be the interstitial lamella. Number seven is this lamella that is located externally, yeah, that is surrounding ex external bone. So this one is called external circumferential lamella. Number eight, <coughs> super easy is the lamella that have concentric rings. So it's the concentric lamella. Number nine, there you can call it, there. those are blood vessels or they could be the uh, central canal. Yeah. Number 10, here you have, sorry, I showed it before, is the osteocytes. Here, 11, you will have the location of the osteocytes, that is the lacuna. 12, the passages that we just talked a few minutes ago, that is the caniculi. And uh, we need to here, sorry, there is a type of one should be 13 and the other one 14, but it's pretty easy. Here you see this bone that have these irregular cavities that it will have red bone marrow. Well, the other one is this compact and dense bone. So one will be the compact bone and the other one will be the spongy bone. Uh, so now let's go to 15 and in 15 they are showing us this structure and if you remember these uh, uh, canals that go in parallel to a long axis they are called they have multiple names yeah you can call it osteonic canal in the textbook they this is the name of this figure they also uh, have Hertzian canals they, there is just like a, a, there is a multiple names. Uh, uh, on the other hand, you have other type of canal. This one, that is the one that is para, uh, that is perpendicular to the long axis of the bones that you remember that are important for the essential for the uh, microcirculatory system of the bones. So those one are uh, called. Let me delete this so you can see it. Our Baldwin canal or interosteonic canals okay uh, and we are almost done we just have 17 yeah that it will be this region here and that this will be the medullar cavity just what you have so here if you remember let's go to this you have the compact bone spongy bone and then in the center you will have medullar cavity here you have compact bone in all these things it was compact bone now you have the spongy bone so here what is inside is the medullar cavity and in the spongy bone you are going to have the 18 day will be the trabeculae okay so i i know that there was a lot of names and there you will need to practice and take some questions yeah, take, uh, take some of the questions and um, my, I don't think that you will remember this right away. Don't get anxious, 
but uh, it's a good way to start practicing all the information that we just discussed. Now we're going to move into a, a different section. We finish with the cellular uh, aspects of the both compact bone and uh, spongy bones. Now we're going to talk about the blood and nerve supplies in the bones. To start this last section, I want to ask you a question. What do you think that happened when somebody break a leg? Do you think that it hurts? Do you think that you will see blood? So I'm sure that you will say yes, they definitely hurt, but I don't know if I have seen blood. And uh, I swear to you that there will be blood, although you might not see it, and it needs to be reabsorbed later. Okay, so why? Because blood and nerves are very important in the in the bone tissue. So here you can see a diagram that shows in a schematic way the some of the arteries and veins that you can find in these three regions of the long bones. So first I want that we go to the diaphysis that yeah and in the diaphysis uh, you will have these two periosteal artery here and the periosteal vein and it also is accompanied by nerves so you will find all of them that they will enter through the Bulkman, Bulkman canals if you remember the one that are perpendicular and so those are the first one that I want that you t that we talk so remember things to remember bones are very vascular tissue if you break your bone a bone you have a fracture they will bleed although you don't see that and they need to be repaired uh, then how those uh, bones are, uh, are uh, how the blood go inside of the bones there are it, there are many veins and arteries that go inside of the bones and I show you the, that in the diaphysis for example you have these periosteal arteries that are accompany, uh, accompany by nerves and they enter through the Bowman canal and not only periosteal arteries but also periosteal veins so we were talking about the diaphysis and we talk about these periosteal arteries that join through the Bulkman canal that it goes perpendicular and uh, now if you see here another important structure is this hole this passage that is called a foramen and in particular this one is called an foramen a nutrient foramen and you can see arteries and veins going inside and outside through this hole and these veins are called uh, nutrient uh, these blood vessels are called nutrient artery and nutrient uh, veins okay so just to remind you uh, here is the nutrient foramen that is the hole and you can see the nutrient artery and vein going in and out so the nutrient artery enter uh, through the center of the diaphysis through the nutrient foramen and I told you that a foramen is a structure from uh, one opening that allows the passages from uh, one region into another one and in this case not only we have a nutrient artery uh, we also have nutrient veins that are exit in using this canal uh, in addition to that in the epiphysis and uh, metaphysis you also have uh, uh, veins and arteries so here the you have those structures here and you have the uh, also the veins and arteries here now we are going to focus into these two structures yeah so while we are we have been talking that they are bones are vascular tissues look what happened in those two regions in the articular cartilage and in the epiphyseal line okay so remember in the green area metaphases and uh, in the metaphysis and uh, epiphysis you are going to have their own arteries and veins yeah so to finish look here the articular cartilage as i said before this is an avascular tissue yeah there is no uh, vessels uh, blood vessels there in addition to that also you have this line here and this line has no function it's more a landmark 
of the region where it's supposed to be the origin of the epiphysis of the epiphysis and the diaphysis in the beginning of the bone formation so remember this line doesn't have innervation yeah and it's just an indicator of vestigial structure uh, finally if i ask you now do bones are well innervated you have to say <laughs> are bones well innervated and you have to say yes and remember what we started uh, in the previous slide saying you know if there is a fracture different type of fractures you uh, in some of cases if they, they break the skin you might see like in this one you might see blood leaving yeah going out of the leg however even in the small ones you are if you break a bone if there is a fracture you are going to have uh, blood vessels and nerves there so this is why the bone fractures bleed and also they hurt a lot so with this we are done at this point you should know the function and the structure of the bones you should know the different components what is a metaphysis diaphysis epiphysis you should know the difference between a compact bone and a spongy bone you should know the histology of the cells that you have four type of cells and three of these one have a similar origin so the osteoprogenitor is going to produce the osteoblast and this one is going to produce the osteocyte while the osteoclasts come from the immune system uh, you should also know the function of, of each one of those cells and finally we talk about the osteons and we talk about all the different structures uh, uh, not only of the osteons but also of the trabeculae uh, and with that we finish this section and if you have any questions just let me know